Hey everyone, welcome to Ask Fernie. I am Fernando, and um, this is about us connecting and discussing anything with spirituality or intuition, or even just me giving you some life advice. So I want to welcome you to my program, my, my Facebook Live. Uh, and so if you want to ask a question, go ahead and feel free to type in your question now in the comments section. Throughout the show, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick some of your questions. I'm going to answer them and give you some feedback on that as well. Um, and remember, whatever you post on Facebook is public. And so if you are going to ask any specific questions about any people that you are connected to, any loved ones, anything um, in that way, be respectful, be mindful, and be aware because it is public, okay? All right, guys. So I've got a few people coming in now. So I've got Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Hi, how are you? Welcome, welcome. All right, let's see. I've got, okay, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, how are you? Welcome, welcome. So uh, let's, let's talk about a little topic or subject real quick before uh, we even get to your questions. Um, and, you know, whatever questions you want to ask, you really can be specific and you can ask about anything. You can ask about spirituality. You can ask about, you know, using your intuition or your psychic ability. You can even ask about, you know, something that you're going through personally that you want my opinion on. Um, try to steer away from um, questions regarding, like, your past loved ones um, because this is not the platform for that. Um, I, that would require a one-on-one -on -one connect so that I could probably prop be able to communicate that information to you guys so let me talk about something um so i posted a video this week um on um social media it was on youtube and it was on um facebook as well and the video that i posted was called the four agreements you made before you were born now if you haven't seen the video um, the clip, I would suggest you go over, you know, to my, after we're done, go ahead and go over to Facebook and go to my videos and it's right there. You can also go over to YouTube um, and I've got um, all that information below. So um, it was a very interesting video and I, I actually covered a couple of things, um, but there were four agreements that we, I, I feel, and I've come to understand through my practices and also my study um, in spirituality and in manifestation of law and all of that other stuff. Um, I've come to understand that we've come into life with four agreements. We actually made agreements before we were born. Certain things that we were going to do while we were here and what was the whole point of us coming here to begin with. And I'm just going to recap those really quickly. And if, like I said, if you want more detail, if you want more specifics, go over and watch the video. It's a really good video. But the, um, the, the four um, agreements are um, forgetting who we are. So we, as people, I mean, as um, energetic beings, forgetting who we are when we come down here into physical world, um, having our unique perspective or our personality. Um, the third agreement is having a purpose or a life theme. And the fourth one, which is one of those things that not everybody comes into life with, but a majority of people now, especially if you're watching this, then most likely you've come in with this theme, is to awaken or to receive enlightenment in some sort, in some form, this time around. So what it was, so it's a, it's really interesting because even though we. Um, as human beings, you know, we, we think we live in our own little minds in our own little world. We think that this is it, like everything that you see, everything that you deal with every single day, like that's everything that there is. And there's really so much more. And I think we, we live in a kind of hologram or in a holographic projection where everything we see is all agreed upon by us as um, a united group of uh, energetic beings. And it's here for the reason, uh, for the purpose of us to have our unique experience. Now, I posted that on YouTube and someone asked a really, really interesting question. And I want to bring that question up here. And the question was, Fernie, is it, and this was uh, by K Lovely 100. And the question was, Fernie, is it true that with our agreement to be reincarnated, we do so to either learn a lesson or teach a lesson that we did not learn in our past lives? Once we understand or deliver our message, su message successfully, we move on to another dimension. I always seem to look at life in this way. Am I wrong? And um, so, Kay Lovely, no, you're not wrong. And honestly, you know, there is no wrong or right. There's only perspective, right? There's only the way you look at things is the way you look at things. Um, you know, a, a sparrow you, has a unique experience of life or of, of their um, earthly incarnation. A, a worm in the ground has a unique experience. A cat or a dog have unique experiences. We as humans, we have unique experiences. Now, I used to think that when we come into life, the reason for us coming here is so that we could learn 
um, we can learn lessons and we can evolve. As time has progressed and I've studied more and I've done a lot more um, really, really understanding and trying to grasp this, I really believe that we don't come here to learn. Now, it really depends on the perspective, right? I believe that before we've come into life, before we've incarnated, um, we are, we all, every, we all exist as we are, we all are. We just are. Everything, anything and everything exists. And so what we do to ourselves when we come into life, and I, I talked about some of this in the video, is that we subject ourselves to unique circumstances and to, to a unique setup so that way we can, in essence, put ourselves in a type of box. And so, for example, myself, Fernie, I created unique circumstances in my life that I was going to live through, that I was going to have to you know, just uh, deal with on a regular basis. Like my mom, who's a schizophrenic, or past relationships that were very challenging for me, or growing up in a very impoverished environment. Those were things that I set up for myself. And so I could call that my box, my story, so to speak. And so I believe that I set that up um, before I was born. And so my job when I came into life was to unravel the reality of who it, who it is that I was because I made myself forget that I was in a eternal energetic being, unlimited being. And so I subject myself to becoming an individuation, to becoming a smaller version of the grander self. And, I, and we all do this in some way or another before we come into life. So I, I created this box for myself and then I put myself in this box. I created the stage, I put myself on the stage and I'm playing the part I'm supposed to play. Now, as I go through my play, as I go through the play, as I go through my life, I'm going to become aware of certain bits of information. I'm gonna become aware of certain things. I'm gonna know things, um, again, that I had forgotten. You can call that learning, you can call that you know, not only that, but I'm also teaching others or sharing my awareness with others. And you can call that me learning and me teaching others. But I think it's more about me remembering who I am and me reminding others of who they are. And I see it that way now. And that's how I choose to see it. So I don't see it so much as us teaching each other lessons and that's us um, um, being taught lessons. I feel it's more about us remembering who we are and what we are. And it's, it's just about a remembrance. But it really does come down to perspective. I still use the lingo, you know, this person is teaching you this lesson, this person is teaching you that. Um, but really, I, as a spiritual whole, I really think that it's more about us remembering what, what we truly are and why we are here. So it's all about remembering, remembering the grander picture. Um, and, and, and I think that's what we are here to do. It's just to remember. So that was a really great question. I loved it. Um, um, so guys, if you have any questions, if you watch the video and you wanna ask me a question, feel free to go ahead and ask it in the comment section below the video. And I will pick probably pick some of them to answer in my next video as well. All right guys, so you ready for some questions? Okay, so let's get over to, I've got a few here. Um, okay, so let's, let's go over to Andrea. Let's see, here we go, I've got Andrea's here. Let me go ahead and bring this size down. Okay, great. Okay, so Andrea Marsh, I have been having some health scares. Do you see anything serious? Um, now remember, Andrea, I am not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. And what I do share with you is my personal opinion um, as an intuitive or as a psychic. And so you really do have to make those choices and decisions for yourself if you're going to um, do anything with your health. Um, with that being said, I think that there are three different issues going on. One is I feel that um, your endocrine system is being affected. Your endocrine system is a system within your body that affects like your different um, hormonal glands like your thyroid, your pancreas, your pituitary, your adrenals, etc., etc. I think that that system is being affected somehow or it's kind of being, um, it, it's in distress. It doesn't have what it needs to really properly um properly function. And I think that that's throwing other systems out of whack. Another thing is I think something you're taking into your system or something that's getting into your system is having an effect on your, um, your cardiovascular system or your heart. So I feel like something is possibly getting into your system, affecting your blood and getting into your heart. So there's a hormonal issue that I, I see. I also, I feel something's affecting your heart system. 
And the last thing that I'll say is that your immune system is kind of crashing a little bit and there's not enough, I feel like there's not enough strength there to keep your immune system functioning ideally. And so it's making you susceptible to different types of circumstances or situations or illnesses. And I think that that's important. So it's a combination of a few things that are going on there. Um, that I'm feeling that I'm tuning into and that's what I'm picking up on um, but I would definitely maybe look into going to an endocrinologist that might be able to help you with those hormonal um, issues that I'm tuning into and then of course cardiovascular that would go under I think uh, that would go to a cardiologist or to a heart specialist um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on that area of your body so that's where I would point you in the direction of um, if I were gonna I feel this is totally this is totally like workable meaning that i feel that this can totally help like it, it can you can get around this um i'm seeing pockets of tissue in your body um i'm seeing pockets of tissue in your body and i still feel like it's that your hormones your hormones are kicking this into gear so this is your hormones are pumping certain things into your body in a way that is not uh balanced and so there's certain areas of the body that are taking a hit so i i, I would really go to an endocrinologist um to see if maybe there's something going on there that they can help you with okay so that is andrea let's go over to um let's see let's go over to here we go i've got this one here's one from jen so the question is will me and my family take our family trip this year um, I think there is going to be a, fa I think there's going to be, well, I'm seeing two trips for you. So I feel there are going to be at least two trips for you. Um, I'm seeing Colorado or the mountains. And so my feeling is that one of those trips is going to be to the, to Colorado or to the mountains. Um, the other trip I feel is going to be, um, over water overseas. I'm thinking that that one's going to be more Latin America, um or south america because i'm seeing latin america or south america and i'm going to go in that direction so one of them i feel is going to be um latin america or south america and the other one's going to be like maybe to colorado or the mountains i'm not sure which one's the family trip though i think that the south america or the latin america one is going to be um the family trip and maybe the ones to colorado or to the mountains is going to be a trip just that you decide to take um, now, if there is going to be a family trip, my thinking is it's not going to happen until the very end of the year. You guys may even decide to do it during the holidays and do it as a family so that you can just celebrate the holidays wherever you're going to be. So, which, you know, I'm finding more and more people doing that where they're, instead of them celebrating the holidays at home, they're going off and they're celebrating the holidays elsewhere, you know? So, um, that was that. So let's go um let's see i've got one here let me here's another one this one's from michaela so michaela's question is let's see if we get this here um i've been having this gut feeling that my job search has been in the wrong area do you see anything um when i tune in to this question Yeah. Okay. So I don't think it's in the wrong area. I think you, your, your tactics aren't working for you. That's what I think. Um, my feeling is that first of all, I see, I see February possibly around Valentine's day. So I'm seeing February, this time being around Valentine's day being significant for you. So there may be something coming up for you around that time frame. Um, now with that being said, your tactics or what you've been doing, I don't think it's been really working for you. It's really been helping you get any closer to, um, what it is that you're trying to 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 achieve as far as a, another job um, Okay, so it's kind of complicated But what I'm seeing happening is I feel like you're going to apply for a specific position Within an organization, but that's not the position you're gonna get I feel like there's gonna be another position within that organization That was would be more suited to you or they would kind of need someone a little bit more quickly So it's weird because it's as if when you are contacted or when you when you connect with the individual representing that organization, I feel like you're gonna have options. Either you can try for the, the option that you think you're wanting to get, or there's a side option there as well. So there's like a two part, two piece option there. Um, I'm, I feel like that's kind of gonna be the way it plays out. So the first thing that you go for is not the one you get, but there's another option there with it that I think is gonna be a better suited situation for you and also the location may be different than what you expected so that's another thing as well so i'm giving it february around february or valentine's day because i'm seeing that being significant and that's what's popping up in my head 
Um, so I'm thinking that's what's going to end up. I don't think it's in the wrong area. I just think that the tactics haven't been working for you. Um, and you really need to tap your resources. Like people that you know, you need to talk to people that you know and tell everybody that you are trying to look for something else in this specific area or whatever. And then that will help you as well. Because I feel like just sending applications out or sending resumes out is not enough for you. I think you need to connect with people that you know. Okay. So let me go over... Um, is terrible okay so let's go over to erica erica how can i figure out my purpose in life am i on the right path because my love life is terrible so that's two questions let me figure out which one i'm going to answer um how can i figure out my purpose in life am i on the right path because my love life is terrible so here's the thing let me start let's talk about love life okay i think that love life the reason why your love life is terrible is because i think one you may not be seeing the opportunities you are being given in in ways that well in as opportunities you're not seeing opportunities as opportunities you're seeing them as like you know missteps or you're seeing them as mistakes and i always tell people whenever it comes to relationships if you're going to put yourself out there if you're going to try to build a relationship with someone do not it's like it's like batting it's like batting at a, in a cage playing baseball you know when someone throws you a ball and you miss do not get down on yourself because you missed the ball. Just keep practicing, keep practicing, keep practicing. At some point, you'll hit the ball, and at some point, you might hit a home run. Now, what, what people who are not very good in the area of relationship or haven't had a lot of success in a relationship seem to think is that when they go in there and that first ball that they are, are that, that's thrown at them, that they're going to like do a home run. And that's probably not going to happen. It's not. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It just it's probably not going to happen. It's, it's usually less likely. So what I would suggest you do is every person that you talk to, every situation you have to connect with another human being, just use it as practice. Use it as target practice because at some point you're going to line up with the right kind of energy and it's going to be exactly what you needed at the exact time you needed it. And so every time you go out with somebody, even if you had a good time and then they screw it up, excuse me, they screw it up. Um, don't be hard on yourself. Don't immediately start to say, God, that was horrible or draw in all this negative energy associated with that experience because it was an experience meant to give you something. It was meant to, to condition you to a specific person. There's a really great episode of, um, what is the show? It's, it's a, it's a Netflix series. It's called, um, um, what is it? It's a uh, dark, dark. It's this really great series that is on Netflix um that well i'll think of the series later but anyways um it, it's a really great series on netflix and then this there's, there's this episode um and on the episode um it basically there's a there's a woman actually there's a, there's this, cu this couple these two people there's a guy and a girl and they want to they're they're signed up for this program and it's like everything's kind of futuristic in the in the uh show and so um dark black black mirror i think it's yeah there it is the show is called black mirror and on the episode of black mirror this couple they're joined into this like dating program and essentially they're carrying around it's like a little bu button that looks like this but it's like complete like completely round and they're walking around with it and it, they've signed up for this like dating program or dating app and so what it does is it sets them up with it first of all it takes all their information their background their history all that other stuff and then it comes up with an algorithm and the algorithm basically says you know that they should be dating this kind of person or this kind of person or this kind of person and every time they date someone or every time they go on a date the algorithm the the program the app is gathering information and it's formulating like who's going to be the best fit or the best match for them and so um this two people separately not knowing each other they go in and they meet each other and they hit it off they have this chemistry that they have with each other um but the app says they're not really meant for each other and they only get to spend 12 hours with each other so of course they spend 12 hours with each other and they have a good time and then she goes on to the next date and so she meets that person and the app tells her that she's going to be with that person for like 12 months and so she has to spend 12 months with that person because what the app is doing is essentially it's taking all the information all of her responses with the other person and it's formulating who's going to be next on her list of potential like soulmates and so then she goes on to the next person after that and next and so she like it, it almost takes like two or three years and she goes through all of these relationships and all of these encounters with people and by the end of it, like not only has, first of all, the app has kind of 
gathered all this information, but it causes her to look at the, the, the relationships or the situations that she had with people that really did mean more than she realized in that moment. And I could say the same thing. There were times when I was first dating people where when I was going on dates where I was dating individuals, in that moment, I had ideas in my head for what I was supposed to be with and how the person I was supposed to be with was supposed to be like. And so because of that, I didn't appreciate them for who they really were in the moment. And I didn't I didn't take advantage of those opportunities or connections. And I left, the, I, I moved forward and I didn't really you know, embrace those. And in retrospect, when I look back, I'm like, that was a really good connection. Or that would have been a really great opportunity to be involved with someone who was, was really a really pretty awesome person. But I didn't see in the moment because we get stuck with all these ideas in our mind for what a relationship should be and shouldn't be. Just like with that show, Dark Mirror, you know, you in your life are being conditioned. You're being prepared for a really great option. But you have to use every opportunity that you're being given as an opportunity, as, an, as, a, as, a, as a way to not only become conditioned to what it is that you're really wanting and get clear on that, but also just to see what it is that you are liking from the other person and what you're not. Even if you spend like two weeks with someone and they're amazing and then the last three days it's absolutely horrible, don't consider that to be a failure because it's not a failure. It's life kind of you know tweaking you and helping you and training you for what it is that you're going to end up with down the road. You have to see it as every opportunity, as every experience. And here's a, here's a trick. Every person that has come my way that I've helped to coach, um, they start off with this whole like perspective that you're, you're describing here. And so I give them this trick, just use it as experience, use it as experience. Don't put anything on it except it's practice, it's practice, it's practice. And usually within two or three like attempts, they end up meeting somebody really amazing and then it turns into this long, uh, uh, long committed relationship. And I've seen that over and over and over again. And also they put in some, some um, energy techniques as well as far as how they're going to see it and changing their perspective and having more of a positive mentality towards that. So, um, and I know this is a long answer to this question, but it's a really important question because I think that you know, a lot of people really could benefit from understanding like your opportunity to connect with others and how you can really connect with the ideal option for you in a relationship. Okay, um, so here let's go to another question. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, okay, here's another question by Cecilia. So the question is, does it also go with dreams? I have dreams that I know have meanings, but I can never figure them out. How can we break down the dreams and find out the meaning? So one of the things that I would suggest, Cecilia, is. Um, Really, it really does help when you're going to look at a dream to see it in a perspective or to see it from an objective perspective, meaning that you have to get yourself out of the dream. So what you do is you take your dream and you write it down and you break it up into segments because every dream has like different parts to it, right? So you break it up into segments and then you look at each one from an objective perspective. It's really hard to do that when you are in the dream and you care about what's happening here. Um, but it's, it's another thing when you look at it objectively, then you can see the parts for what they really are. Um, and so I, I, whenever I have a dream that I don't quite understand and everything that I've tried to do to understand my own dreams, because they're my dreams, right? Um, I care about the end result. Um, I usually ask someone else who's, who's also, you know, this, in the same kind of boat as I am, as far as where they are very intuitive or spiritual. So I usually ask other people, um, about my dream and they will point out some things that I didn't notice because they're looking at it from a different perspective. Um, and so whenever I'm doing dream interpretation for other people, I do the same thing. I don't see it from their perspective. I see it from my perspective and I break it down and I try to give them a sense of understanding about each part of that dream because it helps them to really make sense and understand the different components there. Because dreams are a really great way to symbolically understand ourselves and our journey and the path that we're on. Um, they can also be precognitive. I've had you know plenty of precognitive dreams where in the moment I'm dreaming about such and such, I wake up and I'm like, well, that's important. But you know, and later on it comes to find out it's something that actually happens um, with others. So um, it could be pre precognitive or it could also be communication from a spirit on the, um, on the other side or one of your loved ones in spirit form. So it could be either or, but if it's a dream that has a lot of symbolic meaning, um, look at it objectively or try to look at it objectively. 
I actually offer a dream interpretation um, option on my website if you guys want um, some dreams uh, interpreted and you're not sure how to look at it. I can take a look at it and give you not only using my intuition to tap in, but I can also break it down for you and help you understand the different components and what they may mean. Um, and you can just go to my website, www.fernandamarone.com, and just pick the dream interpretation option through uh, the e, through the e-readings um, page, and then you can t totally like share your dream with me, and I'll break it down for you. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, so not how to say. Uh, okay. Here's another one. Here's one from Heather Pra Peace. Heather Peace. Hey, oh, I love your picture, by the way. Um, so, hi, Fernando. I hope you are well. I am thinking of starting a big business venture in May. Do you see this as being a good move for me? So I feel, first of all, the timing's going to be a bit different. I think you're starting it in two phases. The first phase, I think you're going to start in April because you're not going to be able to wait. Um, possibly even as early as March. But between March and April is the first phase. And that's basically getting your plan really really down and getting some of the components necessary to do your business done. And so I think that's where the first phase is at. The second phase, I don't think happens in May. I think happens closer to June or July, but that feels like it's more of an initiation process as you getting the ball rolling as far as, you know, getting, opening up and saying, Hey, this is what I'm doing now. Everybody yada yada. And there's a lot of promotion that I think you're doing around June or July. Um, yes and no. So I think that you need to really nail your plan because I feel that your plan is kind of loosely put together and some of it isn't practical, practical, meaning that, you know, you might be having some wishful thinking about some things, or you might be expecting too much from life or for the universe to, to help you through this process. Um, so that, I think you need to get your plan better, um, uh, better written down, better, like uh, worked out so that it's more practical and realistic. Um, I don't think the minute that you like start your business, it's going to blow up and turn into this like massive, massive million dollar organization. But I do see it starting to spin its wheels throughout the year. Um, and then I think that the holiday season is going to be a really good time for you. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Even with the two phases, even with putting your plan into place, even with whatever promotion, a lot more online promotion, especially during summertime. When you get to October, September, October, you're going to start to feel like maybe this isn't what you want to do, or maybe this isn't going to work, or maybe this isn't going to go as far as you want. What I would say is please do not give up because I feel that if you just, whenever you feel that way, whenever you have a business, right? And I'm a business owner. Whenever you have a business and something is not functioning the way it should, or you start to see a slump in business, it's not life trying to tell you this is a bad idea. This isn't going to work. It's life trying to tell you, look at your business, look and really examine it from different perspective because you might not be doing something that you need to be doing and then start to do that. And if you'll start to do that and implement that, then you can start to move forward in the direction you want. And so around that October, September, October timeframe, you might start to waver and feel like, I don't know, this was a good idea. I don't know if this is going to really help me financially. Don't give up. Just look at your plan. Look at what you're doing, your operations, your, your platform, and tweak it. And if you can tweak it, then I see the end of the year, uh, December and January, the holiday season, actually being a really good period for you, which is interesting because most businesses, you know, they're a little slower around that time unless it's a, like a product-based business. So, But I'm seeing yours doing much better at that time. I also see you pushing it through, through two platforms. So you may start off thinking that you're going to do it only from one platform, like on one site or one type of site. Um, but then I feel you're going to end up pushing it through multiple platforms or two platforms, at least two, um, halfway through the year because that's going to help move it forward and really get things uh, going in the direction you want. So all right, guys, I love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I wish you the very best weekend you guys can have. Again, uh, go to my website if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with me, whether you want to have a life analysis. Um, if you would like to, a coaching session one-on-one -on -one with me, go ahead and go to my website as well, www.fernandamarone.com. If you have not seen um, the video yet, go ahead and go down the page on Facebook, and then you'll be able to get a chance to see that video. I love you guys, and I will see you next time, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.